Hello, all you Atlas fans. Welcome to another mini project. This weekend, I'm going to be focusing on the game Pieces that was made for the Super NES in 1994. It's a jigsaw puzzle type of game, kind of an arcade jigsaw puzzle type of game. It's uh, very interesting. It's a game I found very randomly. I uh, went to my dad's work uh, back in the day when this game came out. And it was one of the games that was kind of on display in the, like, video game center. Uh, there was, like, a little center where there were a bunch of video games you could play. It's also the same place where I found Kirby's Avalanche, amongst a few other games. And uh, when I saw this game, I was very intrigued by it because I really love jigsaw puzzles. I don't know why. It's just one of those things I love to do in my pastime. It's a good, like, silent activity you can do. And even when you're with friends, you can, you know, get together with friends and do a jigsaw puzzle. It's kind of a uh, very unique team-building exercise. And it's also fun to do jigsaw puzzles by yourself as well. Uh, for this project, it's not going to be very long. I'm just going to go through the one-player campaign, which is not very long. I want to say it's like seven stages. Seven, eight, somewhere around that number anyway. And then afterwards, I'm going to be doing a session of all play. Uh... There is a two-player mode, and there's also a multiplayer co-op mode where you basically get together with uh, one, two, three, or even four friends. I believe this is uh, a game that supports uh, more than two players of multiplayer, and you can just complete puzzles together. It's actually really uh, fun. I really enjoy this game. I know it might not be the most exciting to some people, but it's something I enjoy, and it's something I wanted to share with you guys, at least a few videos of it anyway. But I'll be doing, uh, basically in all play, there are different categories you can choose from. And you have to do, I believe, eight or nine puzzles uh, based on each category. Uh, I'm only going to be doing one of these. And uh, to determine which one I'm going to do, I'm going to host a straw poll, which you can find in the video description. So you can vote on uh, which of these categories you want me to do for the all play mode. Uh, I'm only going to be doing one, though. As for this weekend, let's go ahead and get started with the one-player mode, where you basically just fight against these weird enemies, and, uh, well, let's just see what it's about. Uh, we're gonna fight all the opponents, so we're gonna start on easy. So first we have Rice Bowl Crab. I'll be your first opponent. I have huge eyes, so I'm pretty accurate. Now, if only I could walk straight. <laughs> So yeah, Atlas is the uh, developer of the Persona and Shin Megami Tensei games. They've also done a few other really random games. Uh, Atlas is really kind of known for a lot of uh, the strange and interesting projects that they do. And uh, this is the... Whenever I hear Atlas, this is the game I think of. I mean, I know that they, you know, they are definitely more famous for Shin Megami Tensei and all that stuff, but uh, this was the Atlas game I grew up with, so it's the game I'm most familiar with. But the cool thing about pieces is that uh, whenever you're fighting an opponent, the more pieces you fit in, the more power-ups you get. And uh, when I get a full list of power-ups, I'll go over what some of them do. I may not even need to use them, really, because I'm doing so well. But, uh, okay, going from the top to the bottom of the power-ups I have on the left side of the screen, uh, the first one is the spotlight, where basically I want to say that... Uh, it'll put a spotlight on where the pieces you currently have go, so it's kind of like a little cheat you can use. Uh, the red X, it basically puts two X's on your opponent's grid so they can only put in one piece at a time. Uh, the third, the grassy landscape, it shows you kind of what the pieces look like on the puzzle, so you have kind of a... It's basically like looking at the box of a puzzle, so you know like... Okay, so this is where this piece would go, or you get at least an idea of where it goes anyway. The mirror actually blocks any offensive powers from being used against you. So if someone uses like an X on you and you have the mirror up, it'll reflect back on them, so they'll be the one dealing with that disadvantage. Uh, the, um, the jackhammer, the orange jackhammer tool... It empties the power gauge and depletes all of your opponent's items. So that's a good one to use if it looks like your opponents have a lot of items they have to work with. Uh, the directional thing, the directional arrow button thing, 
it basically reverses controls of your opponents, so that's a good way to kind of screw your opponents up. And the paintbrush will actually, uh, or actually, actually a broom, I suppose, it'll just uh, knock off, uh, knock off pieces of your opponent's puzzle. It's kind of a very dickish item to use, but that's why it's the uh, last item in the grid. I'll probably use that just to kind of screw with my opponent a little bit. The crab is really, really easy though. He's very slow. He can't walk in a straight line, as he uh, so delicately pointed out in his little intro. So he's not going to be that challenging, to be fair. But let's see. Let's go ahead and finish up. Uh, once you complete one puzzle, you go to another puzzle. You have to complete three puzzles before your opponent. It's really, really cool. Like I, like I said, I really, really enjoy this game. I really do. I know it's not the most entertaining game. It's not like Mario or anything of that nature. But I have a lot of fun with it. And I really, really enjoy it. So I definitely wanted to show this game to you guys. But if you're doing a puzzle for the first time, because there are times you'll get repeat puzzles that you've seen before in other stages, uh, you can just uh, kind of do what you would do for a normal jigsaw puzzle, kind of focus on the edges first. That's a pretty valid strategy that works whenever you do a puzzle, even in real life. You can just kind of focus on the edges, and then work on those, and then kind of move your way to the middle once you see things that start to work and start to piece together. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, really make this crab feel stupid once he uh, gets close to finishing this puzzle, because I'm definitely going to use the paintbrush on him. I'll try to throw in some other powers every now and then, but as far as I go in terms of strategies for this game, I like to just go straight for the puzzle completion. If there are power-ups I can use to help me out, I will tend to go for those as well, and that's basically it. But yeah, you'll also find these puzzles in the all-play mode of this game. Uh, but they are a lot bigger, so it's not like we'll have to deal with the same size puzzle. They actually get a little bigger. And this is, I believe, from the Scenes Around the World uh, category. Just to give you an idea of what to expect in that category. Okay, now this goes down here. Oh yeah, I am really, really destroying them. This puzzle can be somewhat difficult, though. That's the thing, though. Like, you could just kind of uh, stand around and wait and try to figure out which e each of the uh, pieces go, but sometimes you need to just try to go as fast as you can to see if you can get it done as quickly as possible. But now we're going to add insult to injury and use the paintbrush, and all that work that he has done so far is going to get uh, basically deleted. I am just murdering this crab. He's going to feel so bad when this is over. But yeah, that was pretty much a shutdown. You got lucky. My friends will beat you anyway. Huh. I'm out of here. Aw, poor crab. So next we have Delinquent Boar. Don't start celebrating just because you beat the crab. Hey, so you think you're tough? Why don't you play me? I'm going to tear you apart. Whatever you say, Delinquent Boar. Okay, so I believe this is the animals section, if I remember correctly. I mean, it would make sense, considering there are animals here. Seem to be beating this guy pretty badly too so far, though. So uh, let's see. Yeah, this goes here. I think the further you get, the less mistakes they'll make, and the faster their little uh, icon things will move. So you really have to be uh, you have to be very fast in the later stages of the game, as you might expect. Oh wow, that looked like that went there. Maybe I was just not really paying attention well enough. Okay, so we do have some new power-ups. I'll try to go over them uh, once I finish up my little row here. Okay, so we have two new power-ups on the left. Uh, one of them is auto, where basically um, whenever you click on the pieces, they'll go straight into the puzzle where they go. Uh, it's a very helpful way to just get puzzles done really quickly. 
and the help button will actually give you a little cursor guy that will come and help you out and uh, put pieces where they need to go as well. So it's kind of a good way to get things done quickly, especially if you're falling behind. He only stays around for, I think, uh, about 20 seconds, maybe a little longer than that even. But you can really kind of uh, make him useful the longer you have him out. Actually, you know what? This might be the dinosaur category, not the animals category, so I may have been a little incorrect on that. Okay, so... Uh, let's use another power-up. Let's, uh... Oh, here's an... Here's a... Oh, wow, we both used it on each other. Uh, that's a power-up where, uh, basically, uh, you slow down the, your opponent. So you can use that item on them, and it'll slow them down immensely. Uh, we also have this power-up. This, uh... This one will basically tell you where the pieces go. Like, it'll start spinning around when you're in the right location. It's a very basic power-up, nothing to really... Nothing to really mention, I guess. I'm gonna see it, wait until you see if he goes for a power-up. Aw, oh, damn it. He already got it before I made it to him, unfortunately, but it's cool, it's cool. I'm, st I'm still essentially gonna kick his ass, he's still in the first puzzle and I'm on the third one, so... This is definitely my game to win. But yeah, I remember I got this for, uh, I want to say my 6th, 7th birthday. I want to say it was my 6th birthday. And I was really happy. This was like the best birthday gift I got that year. Because I like, when I played this game at my dad's work, I was like just so impressed by it. I was so like mesmerized by this game that's like not, just doing jigsaw puzzles. It's a game that you don't even need a video game system to play this. You could just go into your closet, grab a jigsaw puzzle, and do it by yourself, but I thought it was so cool that there was like a video game based on this. It was kind of interesting. And yeah, let me just show off how auto works. It's very, very simple and self-explanatory. And there we go. We defeated Delinquent Boar. Squeal! Squeal! What? I lost? I'll remember this. Watch out! Squeal! Squealing like a piggy. So next we have Geeky Gilbert. I, I, I'm Gilbert. I have concentration power, but I need to watch my opponent's moves more closely before I make a move. So yeah, he's the typical dork character, I guess. You would think he would be a challenge, but eh, he, he's just like any other opponent, really. Uh, this is where I think the medium difficulty starts, so, you know, it, it, it will start to get a little challenging here. Uh, I don't feel like Geeky Gilbert's that hard. I feel like the opponents really start to get difficult uh, in the next stage. I feel like the next uh, person is actually where uh, the opponents start to get a little rough around the edges. So here's where you might want to start paying attention and uh, try to use powers to kind of screw them up on a more regular basis. Because what a lot of people want to do is they want to just sit back and wait until... Uh, uh, they get, like, the most powerful items they can use to win the game, but sometimes that's not going to be as helpful, because then they'll uh, just throw a jackhammer in your face and then kind of uh, screw you over before you have a chance to really get any further. So, yeah, we're going to move on. This is from the Jet Fighter, or the Fighter Planes category. So I'm going to slow him down a little bit. Because he has that auto, so he's probably going to use that to kind of, uh... Kind of give himself an advantage. Oh, oh no, he actually reversed my controls. So one thing I could have done right there is I could have given myself a mirror. And if I gave myself the mirror... If he tried to use that on me, it would have reflect back on him, and then that'd screw him over in the process. But I decided to uh, I decided to just try it myself and see if I could do it anyway. But I'm just gonna screw him up in the process. 
And there we go. He's still working on puzzle one, and I'm moving on to puzzle three, so... This is gonna be still another shutout. It gets really, really intense when, uh... You're actually on the final puzzle at the same time. In a case like that, an auto or even a help would be really, really beneficial. And I'm just gonna to screw him over. He almost finished the puzzle, but I'm just gonna use the paintbrush to just destroy him. So I'm actually gonna beat him even uh, better than I beat the boar, because I just got the, uh, I, I really got that uh, paintbrush slash broom at just the right time. I know it's supposed to be a broom, but just pardon me, because when I was young I called it a paintbrush for some reason. Yeah, let's just finish this up. We'll destroy Geeky Gilbert once and for all. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. M my concentration power! What happened? Sniff, sniff! I'm drowning in my sorrows! Oh wow, he really did. So here we have Revengeful Ryoko. I am Ryoko. Any attacks to slow down my moves are useless. Okay, so this is where things get challenging because, uh... Essentially, she won't have any effect against the, uh... The arrow power-up, the slowdown power-up, anything like that. Anything that, like hinders her movement, so you have to be really careful. This is where things really start to get tough, because, you know, you don't have really the novelty of powers in this case. Which is weird, because powers still work in uh, other boss fights for some reason, just not here. Okay, I was wrong. And yeah, this is the animals category, if you couldn't already figure out. And the other one was definitely dinosaurs. There we go. So I'm gonna just uh, wait for her to get a new piece. Oh, well, that was useless again. I was kind of uh, thinking she was gonna get an auto right there, so I was like, nope, I'm gonna make her uh, stick with uh, just trying to complete the puzzle normally. Oh, but I definitely got an auto. i love to see that. So I guess I'll do this just to demonstrate. I use the arrow on her, and look, she's not like having any trouble whatsoever moving the pieces, so... Quite literally, she is a mastermind. But she is kind of slow considering, and she still gets a few pieces wrong every now and then, so... She is definitely still beatable. And yep, she used the auto. So for the first time, uh, we're actually on the second puzzle at the same time. But she loses the rest of her auto, and I'm just gonna use help just to move past her. Sometimes you want to wait to use the help until uh, you're on the next puzzle that you're on, because uh, there'll be a huge delay where you're just kind of waiting around for the next puzzle to form. But it's cool. It's cool, we got some work done regardless. And also, yeah, try not to pick up the pieces that it's gonna go for, because then you'll kind of stall it out a little more. And yeah, I'm just gonna use this and pretty much complete this puzzle, no problem. I'm gonna ignore the pieces on the bottom, just so I can get the most out of my auto. And we're done. Yeah, try harder, Ryoko. I'm a little ashamed. Gasp! You've defeated my ghostly powers. Someday I will avenge my defeat. Goodbye. <laughs>